This is the start of the year nine database project where we look at what is a database. It's similar to the work we did in year eight where we looked at a flat file database, but in year nine, we're looking at a relational database. So let's look at some knowledge recall and the answers you need to give are what is information about an image such as size, date created, and the author called. So what do we collectively call that information? Then we can also look at what is a database. And then you can say, what does ASCII stand for? And let's see if you can remember what the four colors in a printer, the type of printer we have in school. What are the four different colors? Each of them have a letter that represents a color. So you can pause the video and complete those questions. Hopefully you've got the answers of metadata and for a database a collection of information is organized so that it can be easily accessed, managed and updated. ASCII stands for American Standard Code for Information Interchange and the four colors found in a printer are cyan, magenta, yellow and key. In today's lesson we're going to look at the purpose of a database and we're going to just make sure we understand the keywords of database, file, record and field and hopefully start to understand the difference between a flat file and a relational database. So the questions you need to answer in your ePortfolio is what is a database? What is a field and a record? What is the difference between a flat file and relational database? And what are the advantages of a relational database? So you can answer those throughout this lesson. All this information needs to go into your ePortfolio and you can also explain three advantages of a database. So we're used to using databases but we don't really realize that we're using databases on a daily basis. If we're looking up information online, a phone number or an address, we might look in yell.com. That's a computer database. Likewise, we could look in the yellow pages for the same information. Now, it's generally kind of acknowledged that the computer database is a much better version of a paper-based database, and there are advantages to the computer database. And if you can write three advantages and three disadvantages, that would be brilliant. So we know that it's easy to search and find what you're looking for in a computer database and you can't lose that information. You can make a backup of that information. And if something does change, if an address changes or a phone number changes, it's very easy to update that in a computer database and it's always up to date as opposed to a paper based database getting out of date very quickly. If we think of big companies like Amazon, they have a database of all its customers. And you need to think about what information they hold on each of their customers. Now it's kind of information about phone numbers, where to send the deliveries, where to send the bills, and name, card details, email addresses, and delivery options, as well as things that have been previously ordered. If they know what you've previously ordered, they might be able to make recommendations for you to buy future products. Each one of these bits of information is known as a field in a database. So a phone number would be a field, an email address would be a different field. So it's one piece of information about a customer. Each one is a field. All the information in fields is about one customer, it's known as a record. So if we look at all the separate fields, that's name, delivery address, billing address, phone number, email address, etc. It's all collectively known as a record. So in school we have records about you and other organisations such as the police have records of all criminals, uh, shops have records of all their customers, Libraries have records of all their customers and records of all their books. So you can think of different organizations and how they hold information about different elements. So looking at this record, 
we've got a record here which is all of this information in the green and it's made up of the individual fields each of the individual fields previous orders card details email address are all separate fields so we've got field headings at the top and then all the information in the table so thinking about the school database in your e-portfolio can you list a few fields that the school will hold on you information they will hold about you and then if you can think about information that police might hold on criminals and if you think about a database of different games what fields might be held for that then you need to give an explanation of what a record is so all that information needs to go into your e-portfolio we now move on to looking at the difference between a flat file database and a relational database so there are two types of database flat file is generally a more simple database and a relational database tends to be a little bit more complex so a flat file is just one big table of data whereas a relational database are separate tables all linked together so when I mentioned the library database earlier they might have a table on all the customers or people who hire out books or rent out books they might have a table on all the books themselves and they might have a table on all their staff so different tables all linked together we're going to now use an example of a vets flat file database so this could be what a vet might use they've got a customer ID they've got a title they've, so that'll be mr. mrs. ms etc they've got a surname they've got an address with street town and county and these are separated into different fields so the street name is one, the town they live in is a different and the county is another. And this is useful when they want to search information of all the people who might live in Norfolk. They don't need to worry about the street and the town, they're just looking at the county. Then they've got a phone number, they've got pets names, they've got type, type of pet that is, date of birth of the pet, and any medical conditions and date of appointments. There's a lot of information here for a VETS database. So every time the pet has an appointment, all of this information has to be typed in again. Now that's the real disadvantage of a flat file database. A lot of information needs to be retyped. So that's the main problem with this. It's repetition of information. Not all this information is needed every time the animal goes into the VETS and it does take a long time to input all this data as well as a long time to input the data because of the amount of data being inputted mistakes can be made so spelling mistakes on pets names um, lots of very easy ways to make errors filling in a lot of data so that can be solved by using separate tables of data for different aspects so here we've got information split up into the owner so that could be the name the address the phone number information about the pet so name of the pet type of animal date of birth and then information about appointments and this becomes a uh, when we start linking these tables we end up with a relational database where we've got one table on the owner one table about the pet and one table about the appointments so this is how a relational database would look. There is a link between the customer ID to the appointments table and the link from the pet ID to the pet table. So we can see where the links actually happen in these databases. So a link on the customer table from the customer ID to the customer ID in the appointments table. And from the appointments table, we've got pet ID, which links to pet ID in the pet table. So when we have a relational database, we're not entering data more than once. It's no data duplication. So if a customer books an appointment, the booking is made in the appointment table and it finds information from the other table. So it'll find information about the customer and automatically 
input all that information into the appointment table and it'll also find all the information about the pet. So as long as we know the customer ID and the pet ID, we can find the rest of the information we need. So it's much quicker to input all the data and less chance of making mistakes. So in your ePortfolio, you should be able to explain what a database is, what a field and a record is, what is the difference between a flat file and a relational database, and what are the advantages of a relational database. So you can pause the video and complete that task now. Over the next few weeks, we're going to be creating a relational database for a new band who are rapidly gaining popularity. The name of the band is Blue Screen of Death. They want a way of keeping information all in a database about their fans so they can get in touch with them and tell them about any upcoming gigs, any new albums being released, just information about the band. So they're looking to keep information in a database about their fans. You can plan your database in your ePortfolio deciding on what appropriate fields of data about the fans might need to be recorded. So you can list a, I'll create a list of fields that will be needed for the fans. So again, you can pause the video while you write that list. So the type of things you've probably come up with is you might need a fan ID, so the unique number of each fan, their name, their surname, their date of birth, their gender, their address, and then contact details such as telephone and email. So they need to know who the person is, so they get the name right when they communicate with them. They need to know about the person, such as the date of birth and gender, that information they need to know, and then contact information for when they're sending out letters or contact information if they're sending out text or email. So for each one of these data types that we've just looked at, you need to decide whether the information is going to be text, which is letters, numbers and punctuation, whether it's going to be a number, which is numbers only, that you can add up, date and time is dates or times, and auto number is every record that you put in, it automatically creates a number for the next record. So it's always going up in ones. So everybody has a unique number. So you need to work out which of these is most appropriate for the previous field names that we've got here. So fan ID, what type of field type would this be? First name, what time would type with this piece of first name will probably be text surname will be text date of birth might be a date time and you get the impression so you need to list all of those so this is what we've got here we've got auto number for fan ID when it comes to telephone we tend to use text as telephone number rather than number and there are reasons for that. You might be able to guess what those are. So you can pause the video and write an explanation of why text would be used for telephone number rather than number. Okay, so text is used for a telephone number because the number often starts with a zero for a phone number and computers don't recognize the zero at the front of a number, they just remove that. And there's also a space often in a telephone number, so they can see it as text. The fan ID is auto number. This is known as a primary key, so it is unique to this fan. No two fans will have the same fan ID, so it's a primary key. It's a unique number. You could have two people in your database that have exactly the same name, even though they're two different people, but they'd have a unique individual fan ID number because it's an auto number and you're going to create your own flat file database today in access and I'm just about to show you how we're going to create that we're going to add about 10 or 20 records to it so you'll need to open up 
Microsoft Access, which is probably in the Start, Programs, Department Software, IT, and then Microsoft Access, or it might be in your Start, Programs, Microsoft, and then Access. And when you open up Access, what you'll have is this information you can just open up a blank database and you can call this any name you want and save it in your documents and I'm just going to call this fan database and create so we've now got our database now it's really key that we understand what this button here does this changes from my table view into my design view. When we click this, it asks to name the table. So I'm just going to call this fans and click OK. So this is my design view. I click it, it goes into my table view. At the moment, there's no information in here, but I can go back to my design and we've got our ID. And if we just think about the other fields that we're going to create in here, so I'm just going to go back one stage when we think about what we're creating so we're creating our fan ID we've got first name and that is going to be text short text is fine then we've got surname and that's going to be text then we've got date of birth and that's going to be a date time so we can use a drop down box to find date time and you can do the rest of these, gender, and that's going to be short text, address line one, short text, city, short text, postcode, again, is going to be text, followed by telephone, and remember we said this was gonna be text, and email is going to be text so you can save as you go along clicking save and if we go into the design view again we can now see our field headings for our table and in here is where you can then start to fill in your information so i'll come back to this in just one moment So you're going to create your flat file database and this is what you're aiming for. So we've created the setup here you've seen me do and changing the view between the data view and the table view. To enter information, I go straight into the first name and as soon as I enter Fred, you would notice that the ID number auto changes. So I can put Smith in. If I go to the next person in here, this is Martin again auto ID auto number appears in here so we get the information and you can complete all of the information with date of birth because we told it's a date and time we can actually use the picker here to find the year and the date or you can just write the information in you can change it 1997 so it works two ways whichever you find best for you gender we can just put in male and you can fill in the rest of the information as you go remembering to click save as you progress through this work so you're looking to create the flat file database for several fans for your a new band so this is what you're looking to produce by the end of the lesson it'd be ideal if you can screen print work your work like this into your e-portfolio talking about your e-portfolio you need to make sure you've answered the questions what is a table what is a data type can you name the main data types and where they are used and what is a primary key so do save your work as you progress. Make sure you've saved your work by the end and saved your e-portfolio.